You'll be able to calm her down a bit when I'm gone. No, she seems reasonably calm at the moment. Well, before the next storm. I can't tell you how sorry we are, Rupert. Well, can't you? Yeah, if there's anything we can do. Well, there isn't, is there? I mean, we've run aground, hit the rocks. It's a total wreck. There's nothing to salvage. I'm not sure what sparked the whole thing off. I mean, there we were, thoroughly enjoying the pork on cruise, you know, and then the next minute the balloon's gone up. Oh, we got married, that's what started it. <laughs> that was 20 years ago. And then that burst and I just finished it. My only regret is that two of our dearest friends should have been here to witness it. Still, there's no legislating for the volcanic eruptions of life. I'm stacking the machine, so we're... Oh, for Christ's sake, don't tell me you're staying. I wouldn't stay if I had two broken legs and a heart attack. <laughs> what are you doing, writing me a farewell note? Getting some of my personal effects, if you've no objection. We're dividing the property already, are we? What are you taking, the sofa? Credit cards. <laughs> Checkbook, that's all. And not the joint one. Well, I don't see that it makes any difference. What the bloody thing? But all right, all right. You see what it's like? Devious. Can't empty anyway. And me. Who spent it all? In case you've been wet, some shops now make a small charge for things like food. Why? Brandy cigars. Oh, that rapier wit. In future, all communication be carried out through my solicitor. Oh, uh, just a minute. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> God, so it is. Well, that will make things awfully awkward. Why don't you just separate? You don't want to separate. Well, it has to be divorced for the sake of the children. You haven't got any children. Not by Sarah, but with my next wife, the place be crawling with them. <laughs> so what in mind have you? Plenty. Oh, it's a harem, is it? Now listen, Charles, you are our solicitor, not his, so you can represent me. Oh, well... Oh, was Charles was my friend long before you came on the scene. We were up at Oxford together. It's been a lifelong association. And it's which he's in full possession of all the facts, so it won't cost a fortune in research and endless letters. You see, that's it. That's all he thinks of. Money, money, money. It wouldn't be too far from your mind when you try to live on your allowance. I doubt if I should notice the difference. Actually, Charles is not a specialist in divorce. No, no more conveyancing, really. <laughs> <laughs> then 
convey him out of my life? <laughs> Who wants coffee? I wouldn't mind some. You don't have time. Now, when would you like me to come to your office tomorrow? I've got a short string of meetings, Sarah. Yeah, one of them will be with me. Shall we say 10.30? That's not possible, I'm afraid. Then may I suggest you come to me? I beg your pardon? I am still a member of the legal profession, you know. You haven't practised in years. I only stopped for the children's sake. I should enjoy starting up again. And don't you think we ought to discuss it first, darling? We are, do we? Quite honestly, Madge, I prefer to deal with Charles. He's fully booked. Will you shut up? You see, what a bore he is. He always shouts if he doesn't get his own way. Look, if I say I'm having Charles, I'm bloody well having him. No, no, not unless I agree. <laughs> well, why the hell shouldn't you? Because you're overbearing, conceited, and always happy. You know, and I don't know where you threw it, Sarah, during dinner. I'm surprised you didn't pour the gravy over. Here, here. I think you've had so much to drink. No, I haven't had any since you charged out of the room. <laughs> Have a brandy, dear. Thank you. I will. Hang on. That's mine. Only half of it. And he's having some of my half. <laughs> See, Madge, how extremely irritating she can be. She'll go and make some coffee. Are you sure you remember how? Did you get that, Madge? If you wait another half hour, you ought to be able to get filed quite a dossier on mental cruelty. Uh, frankly, I think we ought to be going. Uh, what before Rupert does? Don't be stupid. If you're not here, he might attack me. That he done so before. Uh, I don't think we should discuss things like that. The case hasn't officially opened yet. No, it's a perfectly reasonable question. My client isn't here to defend himself. Your client is a raving idiot with a very nasty temper, and the sooner he packs his bags and leaves, the better. Where do we keep the bloody coffee? <laughs> Next to the bloody tea, you helpless cretin. <laughs> Thank you, but it's a bit late in the day for compliments. Are you all right? Yeah, she quite often misses. Sarah, please, <laughs> you're not helping matters. Oh, I'm not expecting anyone. No, I'm not you seeing anyone either. Right, the get rid of them. Right. Probably the vicar collecting for a jumble sale. Perhaps I'll take a discarded husband. I see, don't bother it up. Let it all come out. Behave yourselves. Who was it? It was and is your mother. <laughs> Darlings, do forgive me. I was driving in from the country when the car started making some very odd noises. So I thought I'd stop off here and let Rupert have a look at it for me. Now, don't let me break up your dinner party. No, you haven't, Mrs. Cullen. We were about to leave anyway. What are you doing in London? Who are your fathers having a few days golfing? So I thought I'd stay in town, see some friends, possibly a show. You know what it's like trying to drag your father to the theatre. You're still enjoying life in the country? Oh, very much, yes. My husband never liked London. He hasn't set foot in the city since he retired. But he's perfectly happy to let me gallivant whenever I feel like it. So it makes for a very peaceful existence. Now, how are the children? Oh, fine, thanks. Final exams by now, I suppose. Mercifully, we're through them now. Oh, we're all getting so old. No, I'm bound to say in your case, it doesn't seem to show. Oh, how very gallant. <laughs> Rupert, dear, but you haven't said a word since I arrived. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's very nice to see you again. You're looking terribly well. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> and what about you, Sarah? I'm all right. You're looking peaky. Perhaps because I'm feeling peaky. But I think both of you could do with a holiday. I'm sure we'll both have one. Well, Italy. France. Well, uh, a sort of on the border, I believe. Ah, I see. Now what about my car, Rupert? Well, oh, have a look at this, Rupert doesn't know what end of here. Oh, rather like me. Uh, where are the keys? In the dashboard, where they always are. Oh, but you might lose the car doing that. Well, at least I never lose the keys. <laughs> Have you eaten, Mother? Yes, but I wouldn't say no to a cup of coffee. I'm going to see if we've got any cups left. <laughs> Have I upset him? No, Mother, that's his normal behaviour. Where will you stay with well, I generally go to a small hotel just off Kensington Gore. It's quite cheap and reasonably cheerful. How's that in Bago? 
Oh, much the same. He can push a golf trolley round 18 holes that hand him the hoover and his lock solid. <laughs> you shouldn't let him get away with it. Oh, he doesn't. It's a very fair arrangement. He dislikes housework and I loathe golf. How do you want it? Black, white, sugar? Oh, just some cream and uh, no sugar. If you're not too busy, you must come and have dinner with us one evening. Oh, how very kind. I I'd like that. And, and perhaps we could all have a meal at my hotel sometime. We'll all be a bit tied up in the next few days. I'm afraid it's your big end, Mrs. Cullen. <laughs> I beg your pardon. It's gone. You mean stolen? No, no, the engine's broken. You can't possibly drive it. We don't mean it. I'm afraid so. You could wreck the entire car. Oh. Well, perhaps I should get a cab, then. You should stay here, in the spare room. I shall be in the spare room. You'd better not be. <laughs> Sarah, have you got a knife? A knife? Why? To see if I can cut the atmosphere. <laughs> OK, we have some big news, and you're the first in the family to hear it. Oh, God, you're not going to have a baby. <laughs> no! <laughs> Divorce. Oh, well, at least at your age, that's probably a lot safer. <laughs> I, I take it Charles and Madge know. Yes. They decided this evening it was all wrong of a sudden. Well, it must have been. No, Madge and I are handling the case. That makes it rather expensive, having two solicitors, surely. Charles is representing me. And I'm doing the same for Rupert. Oh, how cosy. You like a drink, Dorothy? Brandy or something? Well, if we're all staying up, I may as well. You're behaving as though we're all having a jolly evening. Well, what do you expect me to do? Throw myself on the sofa and weep. Well, you don't seem at the least surprised that me and Rupert are breaking up. Well, it's the pattern today. We hear of nothing else. And frankly, I can't imagine why it hasn't happened before. You've seen the signs, have you? Madge, dear, you don't need signs when two utterly impossible people try to live together. Since when have I been impossible? Once you turned 15. You became rebellious, egotistical, and your father let you wrap him round your little finger. Absolutely untrue. You treated him like a doormat. You alienate people. Rubbish. He loved you, Sarah, just as once Rupert loved you. And two she me. It's okay, okay. Uh, two and she me. Me, she and two. And she me too! Don't quibble. Oh, Rupert. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> since when have I been impossible? Uh, pardon? Uh, since when have I been impossible? Perhaps when I turned 15? Ah, yes. Uh, once you turned 15, you became rebellious egotistical, and your father let him wrap you round his little finger. Absolutely untrue. Absolutely wrong. I mean, your father let you wrap him round his little finger. Your little finger. Oh, very well, my little finger. <laughs> <laughs> you mean my little finger? Do I? Yes. Oh, that's right, of course, your little finger. Absolutely untrue. You treated him like a doormat. You alienate people. Rubbish. He loved you, Sarah. Just as once Rupert loved you. And two she me. <laughs> <laughs> me she and two. And she me too. Shut up. <laughs> what are you all going about? Don't pull yourself together. Do you know what I'm going to do when the show's over? No. Kill you. <laughs> Perhaps we ought to go, man. Yeah. All right, Charles. Um, I'd rather you didn't. No, 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 no. Please stay. I haven't seen you in such a long time, and we, we must have so much to say to each other. Yes. Um. Um. And, and how are the children? Fine, thanks. Oh, he's an age by now, I suppose. Mercifully, we're through now. Oh, we're all getting so old. No, I'm not to say in your case, it doesn't show. Oh, how very gallant. <laughs> Nasty little crawler. Uh, Rupert, dear, you, you haven't said a word since I arrived. You must be bloody dead because you said I'm going to kill that creep. <laughs> and, and she me too. You say that again, I'll shove the trunk up and down your throat. I think I've chosen a bad night. I think we all have. Bring the curtain down. Oh, God! Press the button. I'll try. But there's another 20 minutes to be in the vault, and there's no one there. They're all next door in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you 
you doing, Charlie boy? Um, uh, um, Madge and I are handling the case, Mrs. Cullen. <laughs> yes, you told me. Oh, did I? Oh, yes. <laughs> Right. Uh, your daughter's finally decided, oh, daughter's decided to, to slip her chains and run free. Is it a mutual decision? Absolutely. Completely. Then why aren't you looking more cheerful? Well, I think what we're all feeling at the moment is shock. In my case, it's anger. You mean Rupert's been unfaithful? I doubt it. You won't find any woman wanting a man who's become as rude, arrogant, and totally selfish as he is. Seems much the same to me. Thank you. You should have seen him earlier. He behaved atrociously, and the sooner he's packed his bags and left, the better. Where will you go, Rupert? I'm not going anywhere until I've broken this bugger's neck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not going anywhere. My solicitor has advised me to stay. Yes, that's right, yes, yes. I've advised him to stay. I wouldn't listen to your advice for a second. Where is he? What is he talking about? I'm talking about an incident that took place after the matinee this afternoon. My wife had a torrid little knock-up with this rat here. <laughs> you mean your wife, Sarah? Don't forget Sarah, forget the play. I'm talking about my wife, my real wife. You, you've been having a dog with Charlie Boy. <laughs> well, I don't think we wish to know that. Tough. Stick to the play. I don't give a stuff about that play. They do. <laughs> it's not exactly a masterpiece, is it? <laughs> Couples split up, engage their friends to handle the divorce, and end up swapping partners. It's not what you call earth shattering. <laughs> it's amusingly written, and there are some very good twists. <laughs> only, only when the barman law appears in the second act and gets a few easy laughs. And that's only on a good night when he's sober. <laughs> How could you say such a thing? Oh, come on, you must have noticed he's got a real problem. You know what I mean? Well, a gentleman wouldn't mention it. It's even worse than some of your real lines. Well, you, you needn't be so disparaging. Oh, it's as good as most plays. Set's quite attractive. Uh, and there are no four-letter words. Up to this point? No, after, <laughs> as far as I remember. Well, I may just change all that. <laughs> could you offend people? <laughs> Dad, I'll be leaving in droves. In fact, you can hear a pin drop. Now, has anyone else got anything they wish to add before I warm to my theme? Well, not while you're upstaging us all. I have every right. It's my scene, for God's sake. You do it anyway. Utterly untrue. Darling, when Charles has his line about we were thoroughly enjoying the Paul Cole cruise and then the balloon went up, he has his neck screwed around 180 degrees straight up the back wall. He doesn't have to look at me, does he? He could say it out front. You mean like you do. When did I ever deliver my lines out front? <laughs> <laughs> he used to get a laugh on that line. When? On tour. Oh, darling, that's no criterion. You can get laughs in a fell on tour. Right. <laughs> Perhaps you weren't at your best. Worn out from shagging Desdemona? I think you're mad. Where are you going? I don't know, to my dressing room. Stay where you are. Well, if nobody minds, I think I, I think they'll just walk off. It's not like you to leave this stage without a good exit line. I should wait until you find one. <laughs> I think we should all just walk off. I'm warning you, you take one step out of sight of this audience, I shall probably throttle you. If you can't bring the curtain down, ring for a doctor. <laughs> what chance having a brainstorm? You were in my wife's dressing room. Yes. Okay, I was in there. But what the hell does that prove? I mean, we were having a perfectly odd, innocent conversation. So why lock the door? <laughs> it wasn't locked. Don't lie. I tried it. <laughs> Hang on. When were you in Othello? <laughs> About 20 years ago. Not in London. I didn't say it was in London. Oh, some piddling little rep, I suppose. It was an overseas tour for the old Vic. Island man? Jersey? In South America. They probably didn't speak English. I can't imagine you've ever been Shakespeare. Yeah, quite right, I haven't. I know my limitations. Frothy little comedies about my heart. Not very convincing when it comes to tearing a passion to tatters. Well, you're not doing too badly now. Oh, thank you. Do you think I should take it up? Yeah. Let's see why not. I doubt any management will ever employ you again after tonight. Very good, dear. I should exit on that. <laughs> I wonder if there's a doctor in the house. 
even better, you got a bit of a chuckle. If only it'd been near the door and nipped off quickly, it could have been a round of applause. You know respect for the theatre. Oh, forget the theatre. <coughs> We're in a real life situation. I'm me, you're you, and this man is making a mockery of my marriage. You only had to wait until the intermission. Beginning to find you a really stupid woman. And I find you impossible. Impossible? Yes, rude, arrogant, and totally selfish. You've already had that bit. Can I go to words of your own? I thought that they suddenly work perfectly. I have every right to be rude, and but I'm not half as rude as your boyfriend. And I'd say that making love to someone else's wife is arrogance, verging on the selfish. We didn't make love. <laughs> well, I mean, you know... No, we don't know. There seems to be a slight difference of opinion. No, there isn't. Yes, there is. It's a question of morals or semantics. We love each other. That's enough. That's it, darling. You don't have to blow it out in front of all these people. Well, these people? Or those people? Well, what's the difference? Well, we're getting it all for free up here. <laughs> Cheap little remarks. You ought to have to chip in with some filtering comics. Well, I thought it was mildly amusing. Something to take the heat out of the moment. You ought to be grateful. Sure they are. You never stop acting, do you? Well, we had a pretty rough six months last year. If it hadn't been for that Andrex voiceover, we would have had to take Jason away from Marlborough. I never wanted him to go there in the first place. Well, most actors want their children to go to public school. It gives them respectability. The children are the actors? Well, actors, of course. Well, certainly not actresses. I don't set any store by respectability. Well, obviously not if you're your ding-dong lover boy. You just <laughs> trivialise everything, don't you? Well, I'd hardly say that stopping a play dead in its tracks was trivial. More like momentous. Right, well, let me tell you what I feel about my lover. And I'll make that momentous too. No, indeed. It's so <laughs> Do you want to make a beeline for it? Uh, no, I think I ought to be around just to keep the record straight. Please yourself, but do speak up a bit. How dare you criticise him? He's a far better actor than you any day. Here, here. The sooner you push off, the better. You just can't stand the truth, can you? Try me and we'll see. Go on. He was voted of the year in the evening stand. I'm not talking about his bloody career. <laughs> not anymore, no. Go on, darling. He came to my dressing room. Of his own accord, or had you invited him? I knew he was coming. Don't fudge, I ask for the truth. He asked if he could see me between shows, and I said yes. Knowing what might happen? I hadn't thought that far. All I knew was that I felt strongly attracted. More strongly than you do to me. Yes. <laughs> I happened to be getting changed. I was just wearing my wrap when he came in. He embraced me and we kissed. Passionately? Gently to begin with. And then, yes, passionately. And then before we realised what we were doing, he'd undressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's got them firm in their seats. <laughs> and you didn't stop him? Done someone previous occasion. Previous! <laughs> I need a drink. You won't get much comfort from cold tea. <laughs> Angela? Angela? Go to my room. Get that bottle of whiskey, please. I'm trying to ring the front of house manager. What for? To tell him what's happened. Oh, I wouldn't bother. He's either down the pub or run off with the takings. Just go to my room and bring that whiskey, please. I'm not supposed to leave the prompt corner. What's this? It's just the rules of the theatre. The prompt corner needs to be manned at all times. Well, that's when the play's in progress. <laughs> I'm not supposed to leave the prompt corner until the lights go down. I'll go get it for you. I'd like to help you, really I would, but I've only just got my equity card. Oh. Well, you're going to have to speak louder if you don't want to be an actress. I take it you do. Oh, yes. Is this your first time on the stage? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh well, 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 no, no, I've done a few auditions. Well, you have to talk louder when there's an audience present. They soak up the sound. Ooh. Have another go and project your voice. I've done a few auditions. I 
much no need to take the roof off. There's a subtle difference between projection and shouting, unless of course you're doing Shakespeare, then as our classical actor there will tell you, the more you can, the better. You better get back to your core now. Thank you. It's little wonder you've never acted in Shakespeare. That's a bit rich, being criticised by a man who's just been enjoying himself stark naked with my wife. I was not enjoying myself. <laughs> You're a bigger fool than I thought. What I mean is nothing happened. Oh, didn't like what you saw? Oh, no, don't be stupid. Of course I did. She's divine. She's the most wonderful woman in the world. And I love her a damn sight more than you do. So what brought you up, as they say, short? <laughs> we heard someone at the door. Oh dear, that was my fault, I apologise. Well, you don't mean it, so why say it? But what are you supposed to say in this sort of situation? I mean, I'd happily kill him, but that might upset one or two people. It'd be very out of character as well. What do you think, sir? Well, don't you do that if the balance of your mind is disturbed. I'm not so sure it isn't. <laughs> no, well, great dance about yours. I mean, any man who can strip for action in between the shows with a whole of the cast and the backstage staff buzzing around shows a recklessness bordering on insanity. You hypocrite! I beg your pardon. You seem to forget the first time you made love to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may have. R refresh your memory. In my dressing room of the Playhouse in Western Superman. Western Superman? When we were touring in private life. Oh, yes. Well, as far as I remember, it wasn't very successful. I became pregnant. <laughs> I meant the tour. <laughs> I played in that in the West End. Sir Ian McKellen came round to see me afterwards. He said I was enchanting. I bet he kept his clothes on. <laughs> you revel in a cheap laugh. You always did. Well, it's what the customers pay for. We may as well give them one occasionally. Ah, oh, ministering angel. Sorry it took me so long. I was just trying to put Edward in the picture. Oh, poor old Edward, yes. Is he in his normal happy state? I'm afraid so. Only he hopes it's going particularly well because he's got his new agent out for him. It never rains. Oh, well, you would have to choose today, wouldn't you? Well, I'd say the same to you. He's a dear, sweet, lovely man. And a soap. Oh, he was a bigger star than you could ever be. You know, by the night out, I may end up killing both of you. Angela, for God's sake, get the curtain down. What? Just push the bloody button. I'm trying to find the phone number for the pub. Go and ask Edward, he practically lives there. I think you'd be surprised to hear that his was one of the finest Leas I ever saw. Oh, and was it in your direction, dear? <laughs> your wife is right. You will stoop to any depths just for a titter. The poor old boy's had a rotten patch lately. It's only because he has such trouble learning his lines. We're on his day, still magic. Well, I haven't seen any sign of it in this. Oh, what do you expect? He's only got spit and a cough in the second act. There's no such thing as a small part, only small actors. Mm, and you should know. That was pretty cheap, and in your case, downright dangerous. I don't think she really meant it. Oh, don't you? Suppose you think you understand my wife better than I do. Oh, possibly. But this is what is laughably called a team play. It's no damn good for the actor. There's no kudos whatsoever. No starring roles. We just get lost in the crowd. Well, apart from the divine Sarah, she won an award as a best supporting comedy actress. Well, awards are invidious things. Don't tell us you regret having it. No. Of course not. Oh, get him while you can, dear. It should have gone to you. Ah, no, where? Nonsense. You want a certain quality. People find you most merit. Including you. Yes, including me. Do you fancy her? Don't change the subject. You do. Well, along with most men, but we're not going to rush round to a dressing room after the show and strip down to our socks. Like some people. Just keep away. You're mad. And drunk. On two whiskies? Three. And possibly some before the curtain went up. Rapidly going off you. It's no wonder he forgot his line. He didn't touch a drop. And how would you know? Because I was with him. Ah, the plot thickens. <laughs> well, my dear old bat went out of the window 20 minutes ago. I do not have to take insults like that from you. No, you don't. 
He made a dramatic exit, and if you come up with a good line, I shall leave the applause. You? You treat me like a doormat. Yeah, you've already tried that one, and it wasn't more, any more successful then. If I walk off, you'd only say something rude to my back. Well, it can take it. It's broad enough. <laughs> I would like to know what our award-winning actress was doing in your dressing room. Said she, switching from defence to attack. Oh, go on. I'm sure we'd all like to hear. Yes, we would. Yeah, well, I bet in the previous life you used to knit. <laughs> At the foot of the guillotine. You haven't answered my question. It's completely irrelevant. You've already admitted you fancy her. Look, I fancy Holly Willoughby, but it's not indictable. <laughs> There's certainly no excuse for you to jump onto the catch with lover boy. What the hell do you want? Well, I was I was on duty at front of house when someone asked for a doctor. <clears throat> and I thought as no one's come forward. I better up for my services. I think I'm going to see better lines. Mm, don't think they'd be required somehow, though. How the hell do you know? Could be a man lying here, gasping for life and mercy at any moment. Are you adept at mouth to mouth resuscitation? Uh, well, well, it does feature in the training manual, yes. Uh, but we've had no call for it so far. Not in the dress circle, anyhow. <laughs> I don't think it could be required here either, so I should just return to your post. You just don't want another character woman on the stage stealing the limelight. Angela, for God's sake, get this damn curtain down. <laughs> I'm trying to find a phone number for the Salisbury. You don't go to the Salisbury, they go to the Marquis of Granby. Uh, uh, how do you spell it? <laughs> it's no wonder she went into the theatre. I'll find it for you. You take one step off this stage and I'll shoot. <laughs> That's a prof which we use in the second act. Oh, yes. It gets quite a laugh sometimes. <laughs> sometimes? Always? Well, no, not always. I've seen this play all about a hundred times, I suppose. And some nights, it don't get so much of a piss off. She can stay. <laughs> Everyone's a bloody critic. <laughs> I wouldn't go so far as to put myself into that bracket, no. But I have noticed that if you happen to produce the gun before you say your line about a shot in the dark, tint half as funny as if you say the line first. She's quite right. Would you <laughs> kindly leave the stone? No, I think she ought to remain where she is. Oh, no worry, darling. I can handle a deranged man with a toy gun. <laughs> How do you feel about the toy paper knife? It's just another prop. Yes, just another prop. Oh. Angela! Oh. <laughs> this M.A.R. Q.U.I.S. Who is? The mark is a son in Granby. <laughs> They're only a just present. If you don't like the heat in the kitchen, piss off. I was thinking about our audience, not to mention the nurse here. It, it, it's all right. I did a season at Old Truck. <laughs> <laughs> I think they all survive. They'll live to see another day. <laughs> I'm not so sure about lover boy. Don't be so stupid. I keep telling you that nothing happened. You don't keep telling me at all. You've told me once. Well, I I'm telling you again. Then why should I believe you? Because she's your wife. You seem to have missed the gist of our problems here. <laughs> have you been sitting out there all this time? Well, apart from when I had a cup of coffee in the circle bar, I always pop in there for a few minutes in the first act. Well, it may surprise you to know, Mrs. Uh, uh, Brown. Mrs. Brown. Uh, Miss Brown. Oh, well, it may surprise you even more, Miss Brown, <coughs> to know that my wife and our friend here were cavorting around between the matinee and the evening performance, stark naked. Oh, oh I, I, I can barely believe such a thing. <laughs> I bet you wish you'd said that. I've always suspected you don't like me very much. Well, I will admit there is one person here I don't like very much, and it's not you. I told you, nothing took place. What do you mean by nothing? We didn't make love. I mean, we were together, I admit it, but nothing more. Oh, well, you embraced, you touched each other. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How can we remember? And he was very confused. Only once you heard someone try the door, before that it must have been ecstatic. Well, 
wasn't it? You saw each other, you touched each other, you embraced flesh upon flesh. That's what love is, seeing and touching. And then the highlights, some perfect and some perfectly absurd. And in your lover's case, probably the latter. <laughs> it's only jealousy that makes you say that. Rubbish. I bet that little interruption of mine is just the excuse he needed to pull back. Didn't have to prove his manhood. Total collapse of the stab <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Tell him it's not true. Don't worry. Don't drive the poor sod into a corner. The whole thing was a non-event. He can't cut the mustard. Right? Admit it. Yes, all right. We told you. Nothing happened. Nor ever could. Utterly untrue. Darling, darling, please. He is a magnificent lover. <laughs> we have made love wildly, gloriously, and frequently. Oh, and he can give you lessons. <laughs> well, it might be a touch late, because at the moment I could drive this knife into him so easily it almost frightens me. A balance, I thought so. But once you might be right. How's your first date when it comes to knife? <laughs> <laughs> I would have to some of the early lectures. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry. If you lose this patient, it won't be the end of the world. Yeah, except for him. You do keep dropping them out, don't you? <laughs> I suggest we all walk all this. No, 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 let's stick it out here. Yeah, good thinking, old man. He knows he's relatively safe in front of the customers. The last person to be killed in front of an audience was Abraham Lincoln. But shall we update history? Yeah, put that knife down! No. no. Very well. Get in there! What? Just get in! Why? Because you'll be out of harm's way, that's why! Damn it, I'm not in a French farce! Nor am I likely to be! I'm magnificent in farce! And prove it! Just get in, I beg you! Oh, very well! And of course, I'll suffocate in there! And at his lover's hand! We've gone from French farce to Greek tragedy! <laughs> They're certainly getting their money's worth! <laughs> Kill first. I, I, I hardly. I'm already 
told you, we don't play four-letter words. All right. Bugger off. <laughs> and you can join us. You don't love anyone except yourself. I love you. But you just threatened to kill her. It's hardly logical. Do shut up. <laughs> All men destroy the things they love. I forgot you were still there. Don't try and make excuses for him, he's a mess. I think he's magnificent. She didn't win her award as a best supporting actress for nothing. <laughs> Ask her why she was in his dressing room before the show. <laughs> That's a bit of a liberty coming from you. Are you in love with my husband? Yes. But she doesn't know it. Well, he knows now. <laughs> She'd stop putting your oar in. She loves you, darling. Yeah, well, it's terribly sweet of her. I'm, I'm, I'm enormously flattered, I really am. But it's not the issue at stake, is it? Well, I think it is. She's young, attractive, beautiful figure, eager lips. But I expect you've tasted them already. <laughs> oh, yeah. Might on the cheek, that's all. Mm, in your dressing room? I can't say where exactly. Saying goodnight at the stage door or in the pub, possibly in the street, I can't remember. But it's just casual, polite. I mean, we all do it, don't we? I even kiss old Mother Riley here. <laughs> well, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> kiss me now. What? Please, please kiss me. There are people watching me. You haven't had a kid in front of them. Why not a kiss? Well, that's different. I want you. I understand you. Kiss me. <gasps> <laughs> yes! And he's still kissing us! A bloody cheek! <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, please don't be. You <laughs> have to do it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, that wasn't much of a speech. You can do better than that, surely. Shall we all like to hear your feelings on this rather unlikely turn of events? And is it the first time it's happened, we ask ourselves? Down well on to yourselves. Well, I would think that the assumption is no considering he's already admitted to being strongly attracted to her. Well, I can't remember the last time you kissed me like that. Nor I. <laughs> if there's been a cooling off, I suggest we look no further than our divine Sarah. A cooling off? Who said there'd been a cooling off? He said if there had. Well, he's no right to be saying anything at all. Get back in that bloody trunk. Oh, for Christ's <laughs> sake. No, for yours. Darling, why don't you just face the fact that, that I don't love you and she does? Because, darling, one sensuous kiss does not wipe out 15 years of marriage. Or if it did, the entire audience would be on the way to the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> and your wife, it would appear, has gone way beyond a passionate kiss. I may still forgive her. Oh, at last, a sign of magnanimity. Didn't say anything about forgiving you. <laughs> Will you please? <laughs> <laughs> no. What if there's an accident? There won't be. It'll be quite deliberate. <laughs> You're insane! I feel perfectly normal. Can't see anything normal about forgiving your wife when you're all set to murder her lover. Well, don't encourage it. <laughs> I think someone should point out the illogicality. If he'd be dead, you'd be in prison, and your wife would go off with someone else. Will you stop harping on death? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Frobish is in the wings, waiting, waiting to make his entrance. Doesn't he realise what's happened? Well, I've tried to tell him, but it's not easy on the account of him being to death. Or drunk. Oh, oh no, no, he, he's no worse than usual. No, he's not saying much. Except he thinks he's missed his entrance cue. He generally does. That's grossly unfair. He's only done it twice. Look, there are dozens of actors, good actors, who wouldn't have done it at all. Why do we have to be lumpered with him? Because he still has a name that you can put above the title, and that's what puts the bums on the seats, dear. Another of those dreadful four letter words. I shall make it a point never to act with you again. Promise. <laughs> he says he hopes it's going well tonight because his agent's out front. Well, then we should spare him the indignity of coming on. Who gives him his cue? I do. But when I say Y E S. Right, well, don't say it then. No. Well, if I were his agent, I should have gone by now. Rubbish. I bet he's enjoying every minute of it. This is a damn sight better than those boring revivals of Brecht and Shakespeare and Trevor.
strangers and bullies. Well, you obviously never saw me in the Caucasian chalk circle on Mother Earth. <laughs> I studiously avoided them. <laughs> Nothing to be proud of. I'm not surprised you mentioned them. Your cheap cynicism is beginning to get on my tits. <laughs> <laughs> Just try and keep Edward off. Yeah. I can't be everywhere at once. I'm sure we'd all feel a lot safer if you put that mask down. Well, I'm sure you would. Especially our friend in the trunk, which is precisely why I'm going to keep hold of it. He's damn rotting, dear. And sweat. <laughs> With all these lights, you could get heat stroke. No problem. I can soon stab a few extra holes in the side. No, 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 no. You've got enough air then, have you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Did you know your front door was open? I'd like you to be more careful. Why aren't you at home? And uh, whether outside the shoes bloody awful, I thought I would prefer the peaceful bosom of my family. But it's not particularly peaceful right now. How yeah, you come to mention it, there is a slight tension in the air. Rupert wants to leave Sarah. Well, before he goes, perhaps you'd be kind enough to offer me a drink. Help yourself. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> and before you chip in with fatherly advice, I think you ought to know that Mother is all in favour of us parting. It may interest you to know that 20 years ago, your mother and I came to exactly the same conclusion. And look at us now. Regressing every moment of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charles and Madge are handling all the divorce proceedings. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Pat. And how are you, Madge? Fine, Van. You're looking younger every time I see you. Thank you. He says that to our daily. How's the world treating you, Charles? Chow Chow. <laughs> 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 oh God! You know, I mean, uh, uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. Now this is Nurse Brown. Who? Nurse Brown. She's just popped in. What? <laughs> uh, you don't seem particularly surprised. I'm very surprised. I don't remember her at all. <laughs> uh, uh, about the situation. What? Uh, between Rupert and your daughter. Oh, I I'm not in the least surprised that this marriage has gone on the wrong It didn't happen sooner, uh, given the fact that uh, Sarah is a highly intelligent and sensitive girl, and Rupert is a conceited twit. I <laughs> regret offering you that drink. Well, since you're unlikely to offer me another one, I'm going to help myself. Fatal. <laughs> If you felt that way about Rupert, why agree to the marriage? Well, he was no different to all the other conceited twits that came roaring up on motor bicycles <laughs> and to claim her hand. In my case, it was a two-seater MG. Ah, the cad's motor car. I had <laughs> your number even then. It's a pity you didn't say so at the time. There was no point. You and your mother both had wedding fever and there was nothing I could do to stop you. You have a conveniently short memory, my darling. I launched us all into that marriage to save our own. <coughs> oh, strangers present. Well, I had to do something to prevent you waltzing off with the barmaid at the golf club. Darling, do give me some credit. She gave you plenty. <laughs> it was a mild flirtation. A full-blooded affair. He didn't even know an MG. Oh, my God, I wish I'd known. My whole marriage is based on a lie. There's nothing unusual about that. Many of them are, and they get on quite well. I hope you'll make full use of these facts in my divorce, Charles. I insert your old wrist to the mill. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a trunk! <laughs> I have to remind you that a hastily contrived marriage works equally well in favour of my client. What are you doing in a trunk? <laughs> I could have sued for divorce, I suppose. But in my day, we tried hard to lock our skeletons in a cupboard. We can't find you in a fucking trunk. <laughs> <laughs> are we in that too? It's not the way, but it's a different plot. Oh, God. That's the actor's nightmare. <laughs> Did you have to confuse him, the poor man, in front of everyone? Well, you had to know sooner or later. Well, you only had to wait till after his speech on the next page, and then he exits, very often to a round of applause. Yes, I've never understood why. No, that's just when I'm on duty, I start. <laughs> How much does he 
pale. Only you could make such a despicable remark. I don't blame him, I'm just curious, that's all. I've been a devout fan of Mr. Frobisher's for more years than I care to remember. That's a compliment, take it you without. <laughs> I was privileged to see his Shylock in the old thing. Shylock? How did he compare with Patrick Stewart? Gosh, I thought that was King John. <laughs> How would you know? You've never been in Shakespeare. Ah, uh, true, but many a time and oft I've walked out of it. <laughs> what on earth is eating you? Canker, Edward. That's canker in yonder trunk. What? Not only paddling palms and pinching fingers, but pumping the daylight out of my beloved wife. <laughs> uh, frailty, thy name is woman. Although six to four, he's played Hamlet as well. <laughs> oh, no, no, that only Horatio. Very good, you were too. Memorable. Oh, no, no, no one could be memorable as Horatio. I was a fool to accept it. You know, you don't stand a hope in hell with that part, you know. It's not called Hamlet for nothing, you know. <laughs> Claudius isn't bad, he has his moments, I suppose, and that old prick Polonius steals what's left. No, if you're not playing Hamlet, you might as well stay in the pub and walk on at the end of fucking Forty Bra. <laughs> <laughs> you and Leo is still remembered. Uh, well, I might have been, uh, but I had the misfortune to play it in the same era as uh, Gilgul, Delivier, Branner. Nobody remembers Frobisher. I do. Why doesn't he come out of that bloody trunk? Because my husband may kill him if he does. I refuse to keep twisting my head upstage to speak to a disembodied voice. He's stealing the scene. There is no scene. What? The play's finished. Finished? Well, bring the curtain down then. Angela, curtain! It's no good. I've pressed all the buttons and they've all gone back to the pot. Oh, I think I'll join them then. Lovely. <laughs> Still a drop left in the bottle. Who oh, takes you? Don't second. give him any more. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Only a second thought. No, 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 no. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> second thoughts. Uh, perhaps I'd better not. I've got, I've got someone out front tonight. No names. No pack drill. <laughs> I think you ought to go now. <coughs> what? Please. What? What are you? What? What are you seeing? Those aren't the lines. But you were supposed to be my daughter. Not anymore. Then let it be so. The truth then be thy dowry, for by the sacred radiances of the sun, the mysteries of Hecate and the night, all the operations of all the orbs from whom we exist and cease to be. <laughs> Here, I disclaim my parental care, propinquity, property of my blood. Help me from this whatever. <laughs> Barbarous Scythian, for he that makes messes of this generation to gorge his appetite, shall to my bosom and me be more neighbored, pitied, and received than thou, my sometime daughter. Good, my liege. He's kept. Come <laughs> not between a dragon and his wrath. Uh, I loved him. I thought to set my rest upon her kindness and from my side. Here will be my grain, my peace, as I keep her father's heart from her. Go oh, front, stars go back again. Oh, manager, <laughs> Yeah, possibly Edward Lear. Oh, that's right. That's typical. Mock everything you can't do or appreciate. Well, no legal lecture from you on my shortcomings. Ah, so you do admit you've got some? Yeah, and one of them was loving you. The only person you could ever really love is yourself. Well, he'd like to believe that because it sounds your conscience. That's not true. Rubbish. Justifies your furtive little frolic with love boy. <laughs> we have a passion for each other which, which you and I never had and never could have. Strong stuff. And how say you, good my liege? I shall love her for the rest of my life. Then I'd say you're going to have to pack a lot of passion into the next five minutes. <laughs> Is this a dagger I see before? <laughs> no, man, it's just a paper knife. <coughs> a blade by any other name uh, but kill is sweet. You see, we can all do that. Put it down. No. Please. Why should I? 
understand how you feel, but let them go. I'll give you everything she gave you and more. I see. She said you're... Hold me. Feel me. Just a minute. Feel my warmth, my body, my love. I don't remember this bit. Don't interrupt. <laughs> 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 Where's Mr. Hunter? I pretty daughter, do not make me mad. We will no more meet. No more He's see one another. <laughs> uh, we will no more meet or see one another. Thou art a boil, a plague, a cover in my corrupted ballad. That I do not chide thee. Let shame come when it will. I do not cause. Nor do I ask the thunder there to shoot or tell tales of thee to high judging Job. Then, when thou comes, be better at thy leisure. I can be patient. I can't so sit down, shut up, or get off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't feel very well. Oh, it's all right, Edward. The nurse is here. Uh, no, no. All the times are out of June. This way, Mr. Frobisher, we'll have a little lie down, shall we? May <laughs> fights of angels <laughs> sing thee to thy grave. <laughs> Like that. No, I didn't. He manages that all by himself. <laughs> but he's a walking disaster, stewed to the eyeball. And who gave him real whiskey? I oh, don't no, be so bloody stupid. He came on fist. Well, you might possibly have had a little sip tonight. Well, tonight and every night. Well, he's, he's never forgotten all his lines and brought the play to a dead stop and then poured out all his petty little problems. So you think that infidelity's petty, do you? Well, it is when you're concerned. Thank you. You mock everything. You always did. You've got no depth or warmth. It's not surprising I look for it elsewhere. I felt very lonely being married to you. Well, why haven't you said so before? That would be the point. One doesn't criticize God. Did you get that? That wonderfully twisted female logic. She's guilty and I'm the one that gets pilloried. Mordry, when you're cornered and then you have to face the fact you snipe and sneer at women. Oh, utterly untrue, and you know it. I adore women. Well, I haven't seen much sign of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do make an exception in the orphan. <laughs> well, you may fancy one occasionally, but that hardly comes under the category of love. Oh, and you know all about love, do you? Well, I do now. Oh, he's taught you a few tricks, has he? <laughs> I may be unfaithful, but you're just crude. No, darling, merely honest. To me, the whole business is vastly overrated and always has been. I enjoy it for what it's worth. And what's more, I fully intend to go on enjoying it as long as anyone is interested. But when the time comes that they're not, I'll be perfectly happy to settle down with an apple and a good book. That's straight up to present laughter. Oh, don't be such an old fussy niggas. At least he got a chuckle. <laughs> which is more than can be said for bloody Leah. I'm nothing sacred to you, is it? Hark, who's talking? No matter what you say, I love her. And you're going to stick to that, are you? Yes. At the risk of losing your life? Yes. You know the old friend you always do. Look, if you're more careful. <laughs> Why would you at home playing God? Oh, when I was home bloody awful, I thought I would prefer the peaceful bosom of my family. He's not particularly peaceful right now. No. Now we come to mention it, there is a slight change in the air. Oh, I was just getting in some aspirin and it gave me the slip. <laughs> Rupert wants to leave Sarah. Well, before he does, perhaps he'd like to offer me another drink. <laughs> Help yourself. <laughs> I have it here. Come along now. What? Uh, this is Nurse Brown. Ooh. Nurse Brown, she's just popped in. <laughs> I heard... Yes, prompt. Ha hang on, I've got a phone call to make. <laughs> hang on, I've got a phone call to make. <laughs> Where is the bloody phone anyway? Very good, a call. Cantor, Burgundy. Oh, for God's sake, shut up. Edward, old man, we're not doing the play. The play's over. Over? Yes. Uh, how did you go? Because I've got my agent out front of that, you see. I'm sure he'll have been impressed. Oh, no. He's young, 
far too young to remember my performance of King Lear. But he's very poor devil. There's nothing to show for it, is it? Yeah, there's, there's nothing on film. There's nothing on video. Nothing but a, a few dog-eared notices. Not much to show for a lifetime in the theatre. Oh, what a pitiful and wearisome way to earn a living. You've done some great work, Edward. Yeah, but not many great parts, though. But even in the smaller ones. Do you remember we were together once in Romeo and Juliet? Oh. <laughs> the old Vic. I remember the old Vic, all right. You were Black Friar Lawrence, and I played the nurse. Ah, yes. And lost. <laughs> I don't know why I bothered to stick up for you. Neither do I. I don't know all my agent when he gets to know you better. I expect he'll be coming round to see you, Edward. I should go to your dressing room. Uh, oh, ah, uh, uh, yes, yes. Because I bought a, 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 a bottle of champagne. Uh, if any of you would like to uh, 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 pop in for a little snip, you'd be perfectly welcome. Would you see him upstairs? This place. Uh, I don't like to drink alone, you You won't be on your own, Edward. I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> well, this profession has a lot to answer for. Oh, no more than any other. I mean, doctors, politicians, taxi drivers. They can all go off the rails. Yes, but with them, it's the exception. With us, it's the rule. <laughs> she to accuse me of being cynical. Well, the theatre's littered with disastrous marriages. I've had one. Edward's had two. That he can remember. Oh, I wouldn't say yours is in a very healthy state. Well, it was fine until a rat started chewing into it. Oh, don't <laughs> kid yourself. I stopped loving you years ago. I suppose you couldn't find an odd moment to mention the fact. <laughs> I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Oh, ye God. Oh, stop playing to the gallery. You haven't got a gallery. No. <laughs> Is it any wonder I grew tired of your boring, petty little jokes? Oh, that's an overkill of adjectives, darling. Petty or little, you don't need both. Well, unless you want to describe our marriage, because it's been both. Oh, well, very kind of you not to want to hurt my feelings. I don't suppose there's anything I can say that will make you feel better. Or worse, so don't flatter yourself. But I'm not just having an affair. I'm helplessly, totally in love with her. Well, I have the same problem. Oh, well, then we both understand how we feel. You have the remotest idea how I feel. Otherwise, you wouldn't be standing there making such bloody stupid remarks. Darling, I don't love you anymore. I don't suppose this is the right time to tell you this, but there it is. And are you helplessly and totally in love with him? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm sorry, but I am. And if you have any further murderous thoughts, I suggest you curb them. <coughs> because we've still got three months left to run, and he's indispensable in a part of Charles. <laughs> <laughs> he's got an understudy. Well, not a particularly inspired one, I'm afraid. So do be a dear and don't drop the boat. And I've taken a mortgage out on a small cottage. Oh, how lovely. Whereabouts? Oh, from Fields. Oh, where's that? Uh, near Tunbridge Wells. <coughs> Very nice. I've always wanted to live in Kent. Well, it's not as rural as it used to be, but it's got a very good train service, and one must think of these things at my time of life. I had an aunt in Tunbridge Wells. Well, very possibly. I think most aunts end up very eventually. <laughs> you must have got a good price for your flat in Fulham. <laughs> Certainly a great deal more than I paid for it 20 years ago. <laughs> I only read my play. It's money down the drain, darling. Oh, he's absolutely right. In a precarious profession like ours, you've got to own bricks and mortar. It's the only way to say, believe me. It's what my accountant says. Well, listen to him. It's good advice. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, definitely. Well, I can only speak from her. Ah! <laughs> Don't you agree? Who the hell is everybody talking about? Well, you don't get to shout. We're not deaf. I would have thought that when your wife tells you that she's helpless in totally in love with someone else, you're allowed to raise your voice by the decibel or two. You can raise it by 22, but if I told her what's happened, it's irreversible. I, I don't agree with my son, I guess this all. Forget we. It's not we anymore. It's you and I. Look, but, but, uh, let's not talk about it here. Not now. I'm not afraid of all these common people. Well, you brought the matter up in the first place. And you threatened to kill me. 
Who wants him to throw? Oh, gosh. The promise. Oh, no. <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> you bastard! Come no, down, what's please! No, what's the matter? And I've never said she's told me that the havoc you have brought here tonight, I can kill you. But no, I can come down. You want to kill him? You want to kill him? It's all his fault. Well, he didn't wreck the plane. Ruined my career. <laughs> well, I think there's an outside chance your career will survive this crisis. And Morgan can be set for my marriage. Who gives a damn about your marriage? I do, for one. Seedy goof. I should go to your dressing room and wait for your agent there, Oh, no, he won't come now. He won't come now to see an old fool who can't remember... Who can't remember... Lines. <laughs> yeah, because his brain is out of the mouth of the Don't would you mustn't talk about yourself like that. Well, not everyone else does. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Why do you think my previous agent left me? Because every time he put me up for a pass, he got the same story. <laughs> ah, Edward Frimshaw, a fine actor, a good name to have about the title, but who believe he's got a little bit of a problem? Well, what do you expect of 50 years of trying to keep your foot, foot, foot on the ladder? <laughs> I had talent, which is more than can be said for some people. Oh, no. But I had it, or at least so, so, so I was told. There was one thing I didn't have, which is even more important, was luck. 20 years ago, I played King Lear. And again tonight. What? <laughs> you gave us a couple of excerpts. Oh, well, uh, how did you get it? It's wonderful. It's not a big part, you see. It's, in fact, it's the smallest leading role in the entire Shakespeare canon. By God, one can strike sparks with it. Blow the winds, <laughs> clap your cheeks and breathe. Blow you, <laughs> cataracts and hurricanos, spout until you have drenched. Peoples drown the cocks. You sufferers and thought executing fires, vaunt couriers to oak cleaving thunderbolts that send my white head. And you, all oh, shaking thunder, smite flat the thick rotundity of the world, crack open earth vaults that all germain spill forth that make ungrateful men. <laughs> What a god awful hand. You don't know what you're saying. It's a pitiful. What's worse, it's bad. Oh, don't listen to him, Edwards. Why shouldn't he? Why should he be fenced off from reality? He spent his whole life not listening, so he's never heard the truth. He's not a great actor. He's a boring old father. Only a fool and a very vicious one could say such cruel things. I didn't have the luck, Gladys. It falls. You've had just as much luck as any of us, no more, no less. What you didn't have is what Branagh, Gilbert and Olivia had. That's why they're remembered, and you're not. It is true, sir, that you are drunk. Partly, yes, <laughs> but wholly honest. If you were in the smallest degree talented yourself, one might excuse such a disgraceful outburst. Yeah, go on, go on, defend him. Wrap him up in a nice, cosy lie again. Come, uh, come, daughter. <laughs> Um, give comfort to your poor dear father. Oh, are you all right? I think I'm dying. I'm dying. You see, he can't even be ill with that acting, is he? He's got more talent in his little finger. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Don't you start. You're from the same stable as he is. He can't wait to go prancing around in his jockstrap and tights. <laughs> you want to know something? You're eaten up with jealousy. Jealousy? Yeah, you're no damn good as a classical actor. You haven't the qualities needed for Shakespeare, so you despise him. I've never realised it before, but you're quite right. He does. I'd have to be a raving idiot to despise the world's foremost playwright. What I find nauseating is a mantle of greatness <coughs> an actor puts on when he plays in it. The intellectual aura he assumes as if he'd written the bloody stuff. <coughs> He gives interviews on the radio sounding like the Vice Chancellor of Balliol. What's she, what's, she, what's she talking about? Claiming Shakespeare. No, he's not going to do it, is he? Hmm? No. No, oh, that's a relief to us all. <laughs> do you think I couldn't? I know you couldn't. Your acting, dear boy, is too, too thin. 
If I get all the laughs, yeah, we can all get laughs. It's in me. Oh, you bloody chip. How dare you criticise him? He's a far better actor than you any day. Love is obviously clouded in your judgment. I expect nothing less than an unqualified apology for that last remark. Oh, you won't get one. <laughs> one must always be big enough to face the truth, dear. Take it you share my wife's jaundiced opinion. Well, Edward happened to mention the value of luck in this business. And I'd say you'd have more than most of us. I hope you won't be too upset when you don't get a Christmas card for me this evening. Oh, you mustn't take these things so personally. Thank you, I'll work at it. I mean, well, any assessment of an actor's ability is bound to be subjective. I mean, one man's meat. Yeah, I refuse to accept any assessment of my talents from one of England's dreariest old character bags. Oh, you beast! <laughs> he didn't mean it. Yes, he did! He's overwrought. Well, what's, what, what's happened? He just said I was one of England's previous old character bags. Oh, I thought it was something serious. <laughs> <laughs> When I'm drunk, I'll be downright rude. I doubt we even notice the difference. Oh, come on, darling. You started this slangy match, not me. I happen to mention that you've been lucky, and it's perfectly true. But you have a facile comedy technique which works quite well on a good audience, but there are many nights I have to come on here and pick this play up off the floor. Uh, when you what? <laughs> me, just me deep in drop flowers. We well, certainly can't blame that on me or Rupert. Yeah. That's a very bad remark, if I may say so. <laughs> it's an absolute fact. You and Charles have all your good scenes in the second act, so you just don't bother. Are you stupid girl. What the hell do you know about it? Quite a lot, and she's got an award to prove it. Oh, I always felt it was totally unjustified. Oh, you would, wouldn't you? If it wasn't for the fact that we feed you every line in Pepperly, mm -hmm. I doubt that critics would even have noticed you. I've never heard such conceited twaddle. She, she didn't open her mouth, they'd notice her. She just has to walk on, stand, sit, look out of the window. She has a gift of drawing the eye, the attention. It's called personality, an aura, or quite simply, magic. Are you sure she hasn't doctored your whiskey? I wouldn't expect you to, very naturally. Call me. She's lucky, that's all, just lucky. What, what, what's, what's, what's happened now? Oh, they're talking about luck, Edward. Oh, I've got a theory about luck. Will you care to hear it? Yes, tomorrow. <laughs> ah, tomorrow and tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. It's quite obvious, my dear, you're completely besotted with the girl. And it's equally obvious that you're consumed with jealousy. For her? I wouldn't cast her in Snow White. Except maybe as one of the dwarves. God, you're tough. I'll tell you what tough is. Tough is when you're nominated for a comedy award after 25 years in the business, years of hopes disappointments and frustrations, and it goes to a younger woman with a vapid smile, reasonable legs, and a pair of firm breasts that do everything but wink. <laughs> oh, and you have all those things. Especially the vapid smile. I don't mean the smile. She's a tramp. <laughs> no, darling, you're the tramp. I think she has a point. Mm. She worked on you, you idiot. Excuse to me. Oh, come on. Your eyes were out on stalks. You were eating out of her hand. Can I get you some coffee? Would you like to sit here? I'll feed your meat for you. Oh, what a pretty blouse, sweater, skirt, bottom. <laughs> Just a bloody minute. Let's not forget who's been having it up with who, shall we? A mere technicality. Let's not forget who's stuck. Who from who? I hope you're not accusing me. Who else? I swear, before this evening, I never held him in my arms. Well, you didn't have to. Devil, there's a noise going on. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. Off, am I? It's all right, Edward. It's just our two leading ladies are having a slight contretemps. <laughs> What's the cause? Adultery. Adultery? Oh, God, not yet. Ah, I shall not die. <laughs> die for adultery? Never. Uh, the rain goes to it, and the small gilded fly just lecture in my sight. Let 
Copulation thrive. <laughs> it needs no encouragement from you. Behold, yon simpering dame, whose face between our forks does present snow, who minces virtue and shake the head at the sound of virtue's name. Out from the waist, they are centaurs. They were women all above. Two of them girdle the gods inherit, but beneath are the fiends. There's fire, there's darkness, there's a sulfurous pit, burning, scalding, stage consumption. <laughs> An ounce of civet good apothecary to sweet, sweeten my imagination. There's money for thee. Yeah, there's a couple of good for thee too, I enjoyed that. <laughs> My head is spinning. Yeah, Sink no. down, old man. No, no, but I haven't got the second act to do yet. No, don't worry. No, I've got to keep on top because my, uh, my agent's out. It, it's going booty flee. Oh, my God, what a talent. It's a privilege to have been on this stage tonight. <laughs> and moments like that are so rare, so very rare. I don't spare you, then. I don't see you. <coughs> I doubt there'll be anything as electrifying as that since, well, since the prime of Alan Bennett. We've now in car. Oh, you really are an ignorant crook, aren't you? A quotation from the bar, no doubt. I wouldn't waste your breath on him. He's a destroyer. Anything he doesn't understand, he just kills off. Love, emotion, art, marriage. OK, OK, but would you just switch your bloody name off for a second? Well, I do hope you improve your manners when you shack up with your child bride here, if she'll have you. <laughs> and if she's happy enough to live with a third-rate actor. Say that was veering towards a venomous, wouldn't you? No more than you deserve. I can't think why I ever risked my freedom to deprive you of yours. I'm surprised you didn't, though. Being a rat little show off bent on cheap theatricality. Just like his acting mm. and hers. I've often wondered if these awards aren't fixed. It's quite obvious you've never won any. Well, I'm not bitter about it. Just mildly surprised. No. I blame television. People just don't know how to project anymore. They just mumble in front of a microphone and call it acting. They don't even need to have a thought in their head, because the camera does it all for them. I suppose you think we should all go leaping and lurching about like Edward? You couldn't hold a candle to him. I wouldn't try. He'd ignite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's absolutely right about your performance at the beginning of the play. I beg your pardon. Oh, I mean, I'm not trying to tell you how to play the part. Of course not, but you will. Oh, that would be pompous in the extreme. Mm. There is a, a sort of, well, a sort of holding back in your general approach, I think. My general approach? Yes. Would you care to be more specific? Uh, well, uh, I mean, obviously one's opinion has to be subjective, of course. Of course. Uh, and it's very difficult to be specific. But for instance, when you made your first entry, Seems fairly specific. Oh, I didn't mean to be, but you did ask. I did indeed. I'm all ears. Well, oh, Rupert's marriage has blown up in his face after 20 years. I mean, that's a pretty devastating moment. And you come on as if, well, as if you're packing a bag to go off on a golfing weekend. I see. Well, I mean, that's just my own opinion. I can't speak for anyone else. My dear boy, I'm so glad you've said it. I think you've hit the nail on the head. It's an interesting thought. Well, I'm not saying it's your fault entirely. Oh, aren't you? Oh, clearly the director must take some responsibility. Oh. But he's probably been taken in to a degree by your style of acting. Which is? Well, shall we say, understatement. Or underacting? Right. Start again. Sorry? From my first entrance. Darling, don't be a fool. No, no, fair dues. He may have a point. It's an interesting theory. Just get into your positions roughly, and I'll do it another way. Look, Edward and I aren't on when you enter. Doesn't matter. Stay where you are. I'd like you to give me some pointers. <laughs> right, just give me two or three lines up to my entrance. Well, I exit just before you come on. Go over there. Are you ready? Yes. Have you finished with the apple amber? It yes, was delicious, you. Sarah. <laughs> not quite as good as yours, darling. I shouldn't mention that. No, of course not. My <laughs> God, are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was wrong. No, 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 it's 
all right, just as well, in fact. Excuse me, I've got a bit of tidying up to do. You'll be able to calm her down when I've gone. <laughs> We've run aground, hit the rocks, it's a total wreck and there's nothing to sound. <laughs> I'm not sure, we spotted the whole thing off. This is bloody ridiculous. Get on with it. I, I mean, there we were, thoroughly enjoying the four form proof, and the next minute the balloon had gone up. We got married, that's what started it. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'll pass tonight to finish it. My only regret is that two of our dearest friends should have been here. Still, there's no legislating for the volcanic eruptions of life. <laughs> We're stacking the machine, so if... Oh, for Christ's sake, don't tell me you're staying. I wouldn't stay if I had two broken legs. <laughs> and a heart attack! Well, what are you doing? Writing me a farewell note? Getting some of my personal taxi if you've no objection. We're dividing the property already, are we? What are you taking, the sofa? Credit cards, checkbook, that's all. <laughs> no, I can't see that it makes any difference. Cut the bloody thing back. All right. You see what it's like? Devious. It can send you anyway. And me. Who spend it all? In case you'd be away, some shops now make a small charge for things like food. Wine, brandy, cigars. Oh, that rapier wits in future all communication going out through my solicitor. Just a minute, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it is. Well, that will make things awfully awkward. All right, it's okay. Major point. Give me the next line. Why don't you just separate us? We don't want to separate. No, it has to be divorced for the sake of the children. You haven't got any children. Well, not by Sarah, but with my next wife, the place will be glowing with them. Someone in mind, have you? Well, indeed. Oh, it's a harem, is it? Now listen, Charles. Well, can we stop now? You are our solicitor, <laughs> not his, so you can represent me, OK? Well, yeah. Oh, Charles, my friend, long before you came on the scene. Sorry, Tom, in the wrong act. Oh, it's, it's all right. No, but my agent is... Uh, he, he understands what's happened. More than I do. <laughs> we were up at Oxford together. It's been a lifelong association. Don't mock me, boy! <laughs> Sit down. Yes, yes. There's, there's a my inflection. You see? That's all he thinks of. Money, money, money. Well, shout the money. He's still in my bloody inflection. Edward, sit down, please. Won't be too far from your mind when you're trying to live on your allowance. I don't think I should notice the difference. <laughs> She's as bad as he is. <laughs> Actually, Charles is not a specialist in divorce. It's more convincing, really. Mm. Well, certainly not actually. <laughs> <laughs> and after you, dear boy, you're all over the place. You've got to take things calmly. <laughs> We were up at Oxford together, and it's been a lifelong association. <laughs> it's supposed to be conversational, not Henry the Happy Fifth. <laughs> oh, you'll be pleased to hear I've managed to find a doctor for Mr. Frobisher. Oh, what a relief. Who are you? Uh, uh, the nurse. The nurse? Come along now. Oh, why should I? Because you're in the wrong act. And you drunk. You think I'm drunk? You're in the wrong bloody plane. <laughs> Who wants coffee? I wouldn't mind some. Well, I'm glad you die, but first let get this damn speech right. Here's... Oh. <coughs> We're up and together, this will be a life of association. We're up and together, this will be a life of association. I'm kidding, my friend, I'm kidding. It's not worth it, old boy. Just be now. You get hand hand me, you midnight hag. This <laughs> jackanapes is making an arse out of me. My first nation must have been better than I realised. Don't tell yourself. It was mean and cruel. Oh, thank you for your kind appreciation. Now, I'm in the performance, only fraction of it, then you're straight. Well, my God, you've had it now. Go, <laughs> boys! <laughs> <Yeah, nice. laughs> there won't be one! Just get the bloody things off! Well, you like coming on for curtain calls? You're not even in the play, bloody amateur! <laughs> <laughs>